Hello, everyone. Welcome to this month's installment of the Business Center Power Hour as we kick off the second session of this complete field to finish workflow. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them into the questions pane and we'll try to get to them now or get back to you via email afterwards. Uh, please remember if you have to take a call or jump to another meeting, uh, this webinar and all previous ones will be available to watch um, later on our website. And I'll go through uh, that process afterwards, kind of navigating through the, the resources page. Um, and we'll go ahead and kick this thing off. So uh, without further ado, we're going to hop into the uh, presenter slide. Uh, my name is Jeff Ryan. I'm the TBC product manager, and I'll be joined today uh, by my colleague, Dan Butvitas. If you didn't join us the last session, we'll be the same same guys as uh, session one. All right, so for session two's agenda, we're going to quickly go through what, all, everything that we covered in session one. Um, and then today, we'll really kind of show all the benefits of using that X7 scanner um, incorporated with just tr some traditional GNSS and being able to save some time in the field and, and do all the deliverables in the office. Uh, so we'll do a session one recap with Dan. We'll kind of go through the perspective version two. Uh, we'll go through uh, the point cloud tools for cleanup. Once you get all that data into Trimble Business Center, you know, what do you do with it? It can be overwhelming at times. So we'll go through a few tools there. We'll also show off some, some new and old feature extraction tools. Um, to kind of speed up some workflows and then as well as some sampling and surface creation. Then we'll move into doing some virtual topo shots in the office rather than doing them out in the field. You know, you take that X7 scanner out um, and really reap the benefits of bringing it in a business center um, and creating deliverables there. And then I'll pass it over to Dan to do some plan set um, deliverables. And then we'll take some time to do some Q&A and walk through those resources that I was mentioning earlier for you guys. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and pass it on over to Dan uh, so he can kind of do a session one recap and remind you guys of what all we started with back in April. Or all right. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so last, last power hour, uh, we had a little survey exercise, as we see here in the image, a uh, little survey of lot four. So we've combined and then combined, uh, we used uh, multi-sensors, GNSS, total station, and X7 scanner. Uh, so the recap, uh, so in Business Center, uh, we tied it uh, geographically with a few R8S receivers and also a core station, which was just down the street, uh, as you see in that top image, so it worked out wonderfully core station across the street in an NGS mark uh, or horizontal vertical about a mile away. So we processed that data, which established our total station points. And then we processed that, merged uh, our total station to our GNSS points, followed by uh, an adjust network with uh, and having the network adjusted allows uh, the report, the Alta NSPS allowable relative tolerance report uh, to be generated. And so we generated that report. So now we have a report uh, in conformance with the Alta standards. And then also we used background maps using some existing surveys that are of record. So we could take a look at those, compare it, and have that just as a nice uh, reference to uh, follow along of the kind of how the survey, historical survey uh, of records have been and how they match with, uh, with uh, the current uh, survey data. So that's uh, what happened in session one. And then... Uh, and then with the X7 data, we brought that in, and then we geo-referenced in Business Center. And then that uh, leads us into the perspective here. So we, for Power Hour, uh, the first session, we used perspective version one. Uh, so at that time, uh, no geo-reference option. Uh, we had uh, some unsuccessful registrations, so we had to 
platform in TBC. And then uh, with that, we cleaned, uh, cleared out the registration from perspective in TBC and then re-registered and then refined and then completed with the geo reference. Uh, so a few things about uh, why was the un registration unsuccessful. Uh, uh, that was two minute scans. Uh, so we did two minute scans in the field, a uh, lot very uh, low points. So we uh, perspective uh, made it challenging for perspective to put the registration together in the field. All right, so moving forward now on uh, to per perspective version two. Uh, just one note on that. Uh, last year, we this was uh, given a gold award for the Driven in Design Awards program. And so that uh, perspective came out in October, version two. And with perspective version 2.0, uh, we have new features. Uh, features introduced uh, the precision point. So using uh, the laser on board to measure uh, targets, measure flat targets, uh, or measure uh, objects as well. So then we then also we introduce geo referencing, and that leads us to the, today's session. Is we've actually geo referenced uh, did the project again with version two, geo referenced in the field as well. And then uh, notes for perspective uh, 2.0 for our uh, session today is. We had a successful registration in the field. A uh, few things we did in the, just kind of changed a few workflows in the field is we started near the building and moved outward. Uh, so we have, uh, so the, with this site, there is just a building in the middle and then pretty much a very, uh, very open area just with a bunch of trees. So we used the building first to create the establish a vertical surface for the uh, next scan so it was able to tie uh, tie into uh, a vertical surface as well and then uh, we kept our distances between scans less than 50 feet we increased our scan time to four minutes and then for our target as well we used a uh, flat target there's the tremble part number and this this flat target it's actually metal and has a, a good surface uh, for returns. Before we used a plastic square with a taped on uh, black and white target, adhesive target, and then also that you know that aids into uh, the, the plastic soft, so you know, that laser could be penetrating a little bit for the return as well. So we changed our target selection as well. And Dan, so kind of two important and notes on this important notes is that you know kind of starting with around a vertical face to help or rather assist the the registration process out in the field and then also we'll recommend that you all do four minute scans uh, per setup correct uh yeah so depending on your environment um you know two minute scans could be used but uh, in an outdoor environment where you don't have a lot of vertical features like an alleyway where you have buildings on all four corners um yes uh, recommend to do four minute scans per setup or higher yeah and the scanning around a building at first will really help improve that registration um, and yes entirely, so. you're establishing that first vertical face so then the second scan looking at the the first scan it has it has some information to use so yes so it kind of has like a, a domino effect as you continue down the line. Correct. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Dan. All right. So then uh, just some results from so an onboard uh, perspective. We refined the project, uh, imported control the control points derived from the TBC project. And then onboard, we completed the georeferencing sent out a tdx export from perspective and then uh, directly imported the tdx into business center and then also with uh, with tbcm perspective and the precision points uh, you now have additional 
items in Business Center um, that now you will see is scan observations. Uh, so these are derived from the precision points. So now under your certain points, you will now see a scan observation uh, with a target height as well. Uh, so this is uh, something you will see in Business Center as well. And then uh, in the georeferencing, if you do go into the georeferencing tool, uh, you see the generate pairs option. Uh, so that, so you take that in, you can select select generate pairs, and then actually that goes in there and reads what came in from perspective and populates the list already with uh, the two points, the scan observation and the uh, georeference coordinate um, used in the field from your CSV file. So that's uh, that's what that generate pair does in uh, the, the geo referencing tool of TBC. And there's our last stage is we now we have TBC in perspective version two geo referenced in the field X7 data imported, and now we're ready to generate uh, uh, deliverables and objects uh, from uh, the point cloud tools in TBC. And uh, one thing to note is uh, uh, this month, April, we had Perspective version 2.1 released. And so uh, you see the release notes for all the features enhancements. Uh, but one new tool in 2.1 is the magnifier, which now you can zoom to a limited area and view the point cloud displayed in full density. So now you have a nice tool to actually zoom in with all the points displayed and, and verify how the scan registration is proceeding in the field. Okay, that just brings us to the TBC project, uh, the point cloud tools. Awesome, thank you, Dan. So hopefully you all got a good recap of what session one was all about. You know, it's a really beneficial to kind of go out and do some traditional GNSS um, data collection, but then also take that X7 out um, you know, you don't have to have a whole crew out there, just do your station setups along um, the site and really bring that into Business Center, RealWorks, and, and reap the benefits of the software and being able to use this, you know, virtual uh, survey. And that's that's kind of where we want to move to next. So what I want to go to now is some point cloud tools to really help you guys clean up some of that data, um, segregate it out into different areas or classes and regions. Um, you know, sometimes you get this point cloud data with millions of points and it's a little bit overwhelming and what we're going to do is kind of walk, walk you through how to break that down in a, in a quick and easy way. All right, so the first thing that I want to discuss is our classification tools that we have in Business Center in the point clouds tab. Um, and I kind of highlighted that over here in the top right hand images with the blue arrow. Um, I took a screenshot of the command, the extract cl classified point cloud regions that we have available. Um, and this also does indoor classes as well as outdoor. And I have those kind of listed um, on the left and the right drop downs um, that you can see below. And then basically, once you run this tool, we're able to categorize this in different regions. So things like building another default region, the ground, um, high vegetation, poles and lines. Um, so once you get that done, it's really nice to be able to break that data down just by turning on layers, if you will. Um, so a good instance here is if you're doing some curb and gutter extraction, once you classify all this, you can turn off all the point cloud regions except just the ground and really remove some of that vegetation along the way that may be overlapping or overhanging um, and just get some things out of the way and just focus on only the areas that you're of, of interest, right? Um, so we'll walk through that here in a little bit but I wanna go down to the creating and adding regions um, availability that we have as well. Um, so we have these classes to extract. You can see both um, outdoor on the left and indoor on the right. If there's certain things that we don't allow you to, um, to automatically extract, we give you the ability to add some regions um, in Trimble Business Center, such as you know uh, anything you, you could think of like uh, facades of a building or any focus areas that you wanna go in and work on. Uh, you can add those to the regions um, as you wish, and it's a nice little tool uh, to work through, and we'll go through that, um, as well as doing some, some keep in uh, and keep out um, commands. So this is really nice to come in, as you can see below, and kind of do a polygon select, um, 
over a car, a window over that. Uh, keep it out of the project. Remove any, you know, unwanted noise. You can even add that to a region called called noise if you wanted to. Um, and then focus on an area of interest um, as part of your workflow that we'll kind of go through later when when Dan uh, draws in an ortho photo mode. You know, on the bottom right hand image, you could just simply select over the facade of the building that you want to trace over and do a CAD drawing with, and that's all that would show in the project. So a nice way to, to filter down the data there. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and go into the product and kind of cover this stuff. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, once you get this data in, you can see there's a lot of, a lot of points. Uh, what do you want to do with it? Well, you can go right up to the point clouds tab. Once you click on that, you can hit extract classified point cloud regions. And then it'll pop over here on the right hand side and we can do this classification drop down type between indoor and outdoor. And for this focus, it would be the outdoor. Um, you can specify what areas or regions that you want to extract and by clicking on and off different ones. Um, and then once you run that tool, it basically categorizes all those point clouds automatically for you um, and then adds it over in the view filter manager so that you can turn those on and off um, as needed just by flicking on a layer. And you can see the buildings come in as blue, uh, ground is in brown, and it's a nice way to just filter down that data and only work with what you need. All right, so the next thing we could do is create an add into a region. So um, you can see here in the point clouds tab and in the region section on the ribbon, you can create a, re a region, you can add to a region. Uh, a good example would be, you know, if you run this tree extraction and it doesn't get all the trees that you wanted or it misclassified a tree, you can simply select over a tree and then add it to that uh, vegetation region. Um, so that's a nice little tool. And then being able to uh, do a keep in and keep out throughout the data. Um, again, really nice tools for you to have and clean up your data. So this is a nice instance where Dan did a window over this and said keep in. So now we could literally fire up the curb and gutter extraction tool and run it only on this point cloud and not worry about other items that may get in the way. All right, let's go ahead and flip back to the, the slide. Uh, next up, I want to show you guys some of the, the point and line feature extraction that we have available in Terminal Business Center. So you can see in this image here, it's some stuff that we were doing in preparation for this power hour, but it does pretty pretty well on the curb and gutter, um, as well as some other items that I'll be covering here in a minute. All right. So for points, uh, we have two approaches, which is a manual and an a automated approach to go through Trimble Business Center and basically extract trees, poles, and signs. Um, and what I wanted to show or make a note of over here on the right-hand side, just for time's sake today, um, what we'll show today is the manual approach where I'll go ahead and select one tree and go through and uh, show how to adjust the height of the tree, uh, the breadth of the tree, and assign some feature coding and map some attributes to that tree as well. But over here on the right-hand image is the automated, automated approach where I can say I want to uh, go extract all the trees in the project. And once it runs this tool, you can see all of the areas in magenta that have the breadth of the tree, uh, the diameter, and the height. And basically what you do in the UI is pan around to each individual tree and you're able to do a QA and QC analysis of each tree, being able to assign it the you know, the multi-layer attributes um, that are different between each tree um, and give you some flexibility there. Uh, and we'll go through that with one tree today. Uh, the next thing I wanna show you guys is the curb and gutter extraction that we added into version 5.4. Um, and 
just want to make note of the overhead lines just because this data set didn't have any but if you look down below um, on the bottom right image you can see that that works pretty well kind of giving the, you the ability to select or sorry extract all the or vectorize all those lines um, swooping from pole to pole and adding that as a line string to your project as a layer um, and then ma making some edits thereafter um, so I do want to highlight that you know we're these power hours are get a little short on time. So if you want to see an in-depth demo of all of these features, please visit our YouTube channel and I'll show you how to access that uh, later on. But if, if you're ready, Dan, we can go back into Triple Business Center and we can start with some manual tree extraction. And so once we pan over to a tree, we can fire up this extract point feature highlighted in yellow on the ribbon. Um, so if you go to the point clouds tab and over on the deliverable section of the ribbon, all you have to do is hit extract point feature. You can go ahead and say no to that real quick. Um, but you can see here in the, in the UI, the commands now launched. Um, we have these different extraction types for, for trees, poles, and signs. And you have the ability to come in here and say manual or automatic. And today we'll go ahead and select the manual option. And then what we do is you just go ahead and select in that box to pick a tree trunk point. And you can see Dan zooming into that tree right now. And all you have to do is select that and then go ahead and hit the extract, extract tree attributes. And what it's going to do is, is try to manual, or automatically populate that height and the, the width of the tree. And you can see that halo there um, kind of in the middle of the trunk and then the spread of the tree in the middle and the height with the line. And, and when you go down to the create point section of this command, it goes to the next point ID in the project, which is 67. Um, you can assign it to the layer, whichever layer you wish. We'll just call it points for now. Um, and then you can do a feature code. Um, and if you don't have um, uh, feature codes loaded into TBC, we package that up with the product already uh, simply by hitting that ellipses. You can go launch that, um, or you can go into your settings and download that feature code. It'll already automatically navigate to the, the correct Windows um, folder, and then you can go ahead and download that. But you can either open that ellipses once you have it loaded and then select the codes listed here as Dan's showing, or you could, if you know it by heart, you could just type in BT for broadleaf tree. Uh, for this section, we'll just go with BT and we'll add it. And you can see you now have a horizontal coordinate as well as an elevation that populated there. And then if you move to the bottom, we have the ability to map all these attributes for spread, the trunk, and the height of the tree and even add um, a photo that you collected in the field by navigating to that with the ellipses and then saying what type of broadleaf tree this is. So is it an aspen, a uh, hickory? Um, I forgot what else is listed there, Dan, but I think we have quite a few kind of packaged up as is. Uh, so we'll take our best guess here. Dan's going with maple. Um, and then again, if these automated um, uh, attributes or you're not satisfied with, you can come in here and select the tree spread and select the points to kind of make that go wider. Or you could type in a value and then you can also do that for the trunk as well and the height. So you can change that to 15. as well as change the height. And once you're ready, you can add this to the project and move on from there. But um, the automated approach essentially makes you, you know, do this approach for every single tree in the product project um, and be able to do that Q&A uh, throughout. And today we just don't have enough time to do, I think all 80 trees that are in this section, but um, feel free to try that out and look at the YouTube channel for that one. And also, we uh, have the options to do pulls and signs manually as well. Right. And I think 
we might have the points turned off, so that's why it didn't show the yeah. feature code there. And then it's might be Earth. Yeah, there anyway. we go. And then here's the other extractions as well from. Yeah, and so this is what the the resid residuals are from the automated approach throughout the entire project. I was able to kind of go through here and change the width of the tree and map all those attributes while I had the time. So you can see it adds them in there quite nicely. Um, all right, so going forward, I think we're gonna go and show how to extract linear features um, in TBC. So Dan's already got a, um, a region here called curb and gutter section that we were talking about earlier, being able to add that into your project. And all you have to do is go to the point clouds tab and on the ribbon right by the extract point feature is the extract line feature. And this was added into 540. And so once he, once he launches this command, it's kind of a, a similar approach with the extraction type, giving you the ability to extract curb and gutter as well as some overhead lines, um, basically kind of some power lines if you, if you will. Um, so today we'll just focus on, in on curb and gutter. And then we have the ability to set the line settings up front. So giving it, giving it a name, a layer, a uh, line style, and a color. Um, if you don't do it here, we do give you the ability to do that in the post QA QC tab. And we'll walk through that here in a minute. And so the next thing we need to do is define a cutting plane view. and what I like to, to tell everyone is to kind of do a, a perpendicular two pick selection from the curb and gutter and make sure that it's kind of even so that you get a nice uh, cross section view. So follow that crosshair across um, your selection you, so you can grab one up in the vegetation and then one up in the, the parking asphalt. And then once you make that second point selection, you can see that the cutting plane view pops up and we have a really nice cross section view of the curb and gutter. Um, and then it automatically moves down to define the curb pattern. And this is kind of the section where if you were out in the field with the rod, you know, you're, you're doing that virtual topo shot right now. Um, so you'll go to the back of the curb and select that node one. And then you can go right up to the, the back of curb at the height at node two just as you would shoot it in in the field. Um, and then node three would kind of be the flow line where the water runs or drains to, and node four is where that meets kind of the pavement um, or however you think your curb pattern best fits in your design. Um, and then from there, we'll move on to the extraction bit where we define the interval at which you want to search at. So you can see after you define these four nodes also, um, this arrow appears up in the 3D view kind of showing where that extraction is going to go. And it also represents the exact length of the interval that you define down here. So if I have three feet here, I if I wanna bump it up to four feet, that arrow will increase by a foot. And then you also set the minimum confidence percentage um, interval there, which means um, you're basically telling the algorithm to go search all four of these points along each interval at the cross section with 90% confidence. If it falls below 90%, essentially what, what's gonna happen is the extraction will stop and you'll get these additional options to continue your procedure here. And I'll walk through those here in a minute. Uh, but once Dan defines this and you're happy with these settings, um, you can go ahead and hit extract or um, let's say Dan isn't happy with um, node two and he wants to move that over. He can go into this edit template nodes option or he can select the node two above and select another point where he feels that is best fit. So it gives you the ability to kind of make a change once more before you do that extraction. And you can see it's right at the lip there. And now if you're happy with it, you can just run the extract or hit enter. And you'll get a progress bar below at each interval going to 100%. And you can see it kind of being defined out in the graphic view in 3D.
Um, you do have the ability to hit stop at any point in time if you don't want it to go too far, or if you feel that you need to define the, the template nodes a little better at a, at a different section, uh, you can stop that at any point in time. For now, we'll see how far we go. And I will say this runs a whole lot better um, outside of GoToWebinar, but it's still working pretty good here. And really this saves a lot of time instead of having to hand draw, you know, these four lines throughout the parking lot. Um, or even being out there, you know, shooting all this in, just setting up the X7 and letting it do the work for you. Um, so for this instance, um, we have a couple options here. We could do, if you have a straightaway path here and you're done on this side, you could hit the switch direction button over in the, the UI pane and then work your way back the other way. So it'll kind of flip directions and take you back that way. You also have the ability, um, not now, but um, if, once we hit the extract button on the other side, you can undo um, back one section and then kind of do some corrections if you wanted. So Dan can do the undo here and we can go back one. Um, but right now I wanna walk through some of these additional options. Um, so if I go, We've already walked through the edit template nodes. Next, we have the apply auto, temp auto template, which means if you have, uh, if you zoom in here, you can see that some of these nodes kind of fell um, outside of that cross section a little bit. And what I can do here is apply the auto template. And generally speaking, the algorithm tries to do its best to fit these four nodes back to the cross section if, they're, if they fall within 20 centimeters distance of that cross section. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and give this a shot and see how well it works. We're always trying to improve this as well. Um, algorithms take some time. And so right now I can go back up to the edit nodes and basically pull that node two back up. And then we're kind of back on track with our, our process. Um, there is also the select next node point. And this works really well around a you know change in elevation. So what I can do is uh, pick a node to refer to. And for this instance, we can go to uh, node two and select the box and we'll go into the 3D view and basically select where you think the next interval of node two goes. And so we'll go to the back of curve there and essentially, you know, it, it powers through, um, it generates a new view in the cutting plane. And what we can do is kind of modify those nodes to go down a, ha a handicap ramp, if you will. Um, so we'll go down one section there um, and then work through that process with this um, option. And then we also have the select search points option that'll help you work past um, some long curves that get a little tricky or some 90 degree bends. Um, essentially, all you have to do is just pick some guidance points and guide that algorithm around um, a tight curve. Um, yeah, so Dan's showing uh, what we'd probably do around a 90 degree bend, but we don't have that in that, this region now. But if you check out the YouTube videos, you'll be able to show, see a, a 20 minute video on all of this. All right. I think we're ready to go on to the next subject, but oh, actually we'll go ahead and finish this. I wanna quickly walk you through the post QA QC process. And so we give you the ability to similar to uh, some other uh, extraction types in TBC. If I zoom out, I can see that these are now vectorized and, and magenta lines. I have the ability to kind of navigate to each line by doing the the um, left and right arrows. I can ignore them. I can mark them as normal or mark it to go back as later. I can also add in that limit box, uh, very similar to the automated approach with points. And then if I go to the smooth line options, we give you some options uh, um, there to do on certain lines around um, corners um, or curves. So being able to best fit a line, similar to the, how we have line string edits in Business Center today. Um, I can apply it to one or I can apply it to all four lines. And then 
down in the line settings again, if you didn't do it up front, you can do it later. And then once I'm ready, I can add all these to my project. And now I have four line strings to my project for curb and gutter. And you can see it, it works pretty well um, with the points. All right. So next up, we have some sampling and surface creation that I want to walk through. And essentially what we can do is uh, sample the point cloud region. So you can see down here and and this big picture image, if you will, um, I've got a lot of points on the left-hand side. Once I run this tool at a certain interval to space it out, um, I can down, down sample uh, this region because we don't really need a lot of these points to generate a surface. Um, and then we'll walk through creating a surface in the ribbon, kind of working from left to right. Um, we try to put these commands in that order and in working order, if you will. Um, and then we'll add some members, um, surface members and a boundary to it. Um, to show you how to do that. So we'll hop in TBC again. And really, I wanted to show off that curb and gutter extraction beforehand so that we can incorporate that as members into the surface. So um, good workflow here is once we've already done these uh, classified regions, ideally what you would do is just turn on your ground region and what we can do is go up to the point cloud section and we can hit the sample region command and we can give it a name. And for this one, we can call it sample or um, whatever you wish. We can select the point cloud section or region that we want to sample. For this one, we'll call it ground sample. I'll select the ground and we'll do the sampling type as spatial because we kind of want to get a not a random distance between points but um, a spacing of five feet in between and so once we go ahead and hit store we sample that down and Dan's already got it here to the ground sample at five feet and can you can you bump up that point size, Dan? There we go. All right, so now you can see you have a, a much less uh, dense point cloud there for some surface creation. And so what we can do next is turn on um, our line work for the curb and gutter. And this is all the, the work that we did beforehand, um, generating all of this to put into the surface. So what we can do is go ahead and go to the surfaces tab. And then on the far left, what we'll do is first start with the create surface command. We'll go ahead and launch that. We can give it a new name. We have a, a different surface that you could call it original earthworks, um, et cetera. You can define a color. And basically what you can do is come in and select the points that you want to use. Go ahead and hit apply or okay. And down at the bottom, you'll have your progress bar going. And if we go to 3D view, we now see that we generated a quick um, surface model, really quick. But what, what would be nice is to add some definition to that. Um, and so what we can do next is go into the surface members command. And what we can do is 
go into the surface and we define what surface we're adding members to. If you have multiple surfaces in a project, this is where you would make that selection. Uh, for this one, it's the original. And what we can do is go ahead and add all of the line work for curb and gutter. And we'll simply hit add. And what it'll do is it'll generate the surface and include these, these definition markers in there. So you can add some, some specific topo points that you want, um, anything that you are wanting to define your surface as, um, you do it here. And so you can see that this really generates some nice curb and gutter um, into the surface throughout your entire project. You can go over the handicap ramps and it looks pretty good. And from there, you can add in a, a boundary to kind of trim that up, but I think we've already kind of done that for you. And there you have it, just a quick quick way to generate a surface in your project as part of your workflow. All right, if we go back to that. All right, one moment, I'm adding some boundaries. Oh, sorry. Jumping ahead here. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, so we added an edge break line, and then we're going to go into the boundary. And then we're going to add the footprint. And that. And then we'll add some boundaries and then uh, we should have our holes appear as well. Essentially, Dan's using that building footprint to kind of keep that section out. And there we have our boundaries where we cut the surface off, couple curb and little islands and the building footprint. Awesome. Thank you, Dan. And that boundary is nice. If you if you had a, a kind of a legal boundary to go off of, you could go all the way up to it. Um, your choice on how you define it. All right. So the next thing I want to show you guys is how to do some uh, CAD shots as well as the, the CAD command line and really utilize that in, in different views, um, if you will. So kind of being able to even look through the lens of the X7 and do some validation, uh, verify where these points fall with the imagery, uh, the point clouds, and then really just draw right in that window um, and use it to the best of your ability. So you, this is, you know, optional to do and you can use this CAD command line and, and the station view, the plan view, the 3D view um, through the lens. And the, um, it's really nice to have. Uh, and then also being able to utilize the, the measure codes mode is what we've added into to 540, which is a really nice additional feature as well in the create point. Um, so I'll walk through all of these here shortly. Hop back in a TBC. And I think, Dan, you're gonna go to station 10, was it? I think station 10 was right by the, the drive-through. And here you can see, we can look right through the X7 and kind of see where all of our line work falls. I can validate all of this. I can add in more line work and more points using a few different ways. And the thing I wanted to show you first is going into the CAD tab, and then create a point. And what I can do here is check this box 
called measure codes mode in the UI. And what that does is it has, um, it categorized all of your feature codes into specific areas. So right here, if I'm kind of panning around in this 3D station view space, I can see right here that I have a manhole. Uh, that may not have been shot in the field, or I didn't want to do it in the field and I can just do it in the office. I can come in here and I can actually see that that's a sewer hole. Um, I can go into the um, create point, check on that measure codes mode, and then I can drop down these groups and go into, I believe, the utility section. And I can see I think it was water utilities. And then I can see I've got a sewer manhole, SMH. And what we try to replicate here is if you were in the field using an access controller. Um, so all I have to do is just click the SMH once and I can come in here and I'm already ready to select the center point of that manhole. I think we might have to turn the point clouds on. And you can see I've, I've got a northing easting elevation populated on that. And I once I hit it add to my project, it will populate that feature code symbol as well. Um, I think that was just turned off right now. flip that on real quick. And there you have it. I have a, a, a feature code processed already on that point. And really, I can pan around and do really quick uh, topographic shots in the office. So I can pan around. I can do um, some brush shots. I can get this electric line here. Um, so really kind of avoid sending your crew in a hard to reach place or out in traffic. This is a really nice way to set up a scanner um, by that area and just go in and do some virtual topo um, and kind of avoid a safety hazard. Um, one other thing that I wanted to show you outside of this measure codes mode would also be the CAD command line. So if I go down and hit F3 or hit this CAD command line button at the bottom, I can simply open this window and type in P for create a point and then enter or select. I go to my next point ID. Um, I can also assign it the layer. Um, for this one, we could keep it as zero. Um, and then I can enter in a, a feature code. So for this, I could do BRSH for, for brush. And then I can come over here in the vegetation over here and shoot in a point right for that, um, that bush there. I have to turn on more, more point clouds. Uh, I can accept the elevation and change that to survey quality. And it should populate that because we had it on. A different layer but as you can see it's a really nice way to come in here and, and generate points um, you can also come in and there it is right there point 69 um, you can also come in here and type in l for uh, line string and you could literally draw throughout your project you could go up to the building um, draw on some details on the, the brick structure or the door um, however you you guys see fit And I think that's all I wanted to show, Dan, and I can turn it back over to you to do some of the, the plat deliverables. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna, okay. All right, so we're gonna discuss uh, the plan set uh, in the kind of horizontal and vertical. And then just uh, so our first one is just going to review the plan set, what a plan set is, sheet set, 
and a sheet. Uh, then go into the vertical uh, using two point cloud tools called the ortho photo and the rectified image. And then in the ortho tool, I'll just kind of go through the tool here is uh, the ortho tool creates an image from the point cloud. So you have a few different types to set it to color, grayscale. Uh, then you use the plane manager and then the cutting plane view to generate line work. Um, so the ortho tool uses point cloud. Uh, the next one is rectified image. That comes from station view. We also will use the plane manager and the cutting plane view. Uh, those are the two tools in the point cloud. And then in the end result uh, from the ortho tool, generating line work, putting that into a plan set, and then also using the rectified image and drawing some complicated brickwork or something of that nature that you like to put in uh, an elevation drawing. And then the last, uh, last one, the horizontal section is just taking the line work two-dimensionally, moving that into a plan set. And then uh, with the land survey plat, uh, now we have uh, a plat on a piece of paper with the information and we've uh, did a field to finish within business center. Okay, so we're gonna grab this one. All right, we'll exit that. All right, so our first one, we'll just kind of review. Um, so from our drafting tab, uh, drafting tab, there we have it, our manager, and we have plan set. So in the drafting tab, we do have templates. Uh, so there's already templates created. You open this up, select the one you want, uh, but predefined, but I just wanna show you how you can create your border, your template or your, your title block, et cetera, just manually doing that. Um, so in the plan set, so we have, uh, geez, um, so first one is the name of the, the entire set. And we'll give this one, we'll just call this one land, uh, land survey. Land survey plats. We click OK. So that creates the name, the bunch, uh, sheet set name. So this could be example of 24 by 36 layouts. And then you select the, the type of sheet. Is it a cross section? Is it custom, a plan and grid or profile? But these ones will be a custom. Set your paper size. So we'll go 24 by 36 landscape. And then we'll have, uh, so you could have title, title block for the sheet if it's multi sheets. Um, but this one is just a one sheet, one sheet layout. And then we create that. So then we look at the structure of that. So you have the name, then you have the layout, the sheet set, and then the sheet. And so here we'll open up the sheet view. So you right click new sheet view and that opens up the sheet set view. Um, so anything you draw in the sheet set is going to appear in the sheet. So then we'll just uh, quickly create a, a paper edge and then just quickly zero comma zero and then 36 by 24. Yeah, one thing to note is when you're in the, we'll hit apply, close. And now we've created a paper edge. When we're in the sheet view in the in the plan set, you're either going to be in millimeters or inches. And then so there's our paper edge really quickly. And then we can now just use some of our uh, CAD commands. And we'll create the border. 
And then we have that that's already created with the, the line width as well. Offset distance, just a half an inch around the paper, the direction. And then we want to select a rectangle and 0.5 and apply. And now we've just created our border. And so now if we look at the sheet view, new sheet view, so what we've done in the sheet set appears into the individual sheet. So that's just a quick rundown of how you can do things. You can offset, break the line, create your title block, et cetera. So, and then we'll just go look at one we've already imported, vertical drawing, the new sheet view. And there we have a plan set with a title block, et cetera. So now we'll step into, so I've already created, so I've separated out, uh, did the keep in, keep out tool. And there's, there's the building face. So then we'll go into the point cloud tab, uh, go into the ortho photo. So we can send it out true color, color coded, grayscale or depth. And then we'll just select uh, our true color, the plane. So we got to define a plane. Our plane manager opens. And we'll do a vertical plane. Asks us for the two points, the position of the plane. I'll put it right in the middle. And now we've defined our plane that we're going to work in. That's going to generate. So now we have, we've, then we identify, so we've identified the plane. Then we identify the corners. And that defines the corner of the image. And we set our pixel size, select store. And then it generates the image and it actually brings it back in. So it's already imported in there. And so now we can close that. And now we'll go into the cutting plane view. And now we have our cutting plane and now we can start generating line work in this plane by using the cutting plane tool. So if we needed to draw some windows, brick patterns, we can just now use our CAD tools. And we just go here. And draw a couple windows. And then if we want to draw the, we can draw the line. And if we want to draw the sill, we enter that. And so now we have uh, some line work drawn in the cutting plane view. Now, if we want to get it to our, our, our paper set, to our plan set, uh, first we need to draw in a, and that's that one. So that one, that one, just leave it zero. So we'll need to, so the method we use is the DynaView frame. So we'll call that the DynaView. So we'll, we build our frame, so what's inside of there goes into the plan set. So then we'll go into our, so now we'll go into our sheet view. We'll open our sheet. So then we go into the drafting. We'll go into the Dyna view, and that's the Dyna view. Then we go back to the cutting plane select the frame and then we bounce back into the sheet oh, come on frame 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 there we have it scale now we change our scale and then now we have so the dyna view frame now shown in the square we can insert that no rotation. Now we've brought our line work we have. Now we're in into the section of 
So now we've trans uh, we transferred the line work here into our sheet, and then we could draw out the building, uh, put some text in there, et cetera. Um, so we've uh, kind of come to the time limit. Um, so that's the ortho photo. And then we're just going to step back into and just go kind of just hash back. So this is what we've demonstrated with the ortho tool is now took in line work from the cutting plane and put it into put it on paper. And same thing with a rectified image, you're using imagery from the station view and drawing in doors, windows, stairs, et cetera, putting that on paper as well. Same thing with the horizontal section is doing the drafting in your plan view and sheet set and then sending it out as a, a PDF or sending it to your plotter. Um, so I will move now to our TBC resources. Thanks, Dan. So hopefully you guys saw the benefits of, you know, taking that line work, especially, you know, on those horizontal side and applying that to the sheet set and kind of making that final deliverable um, and kind of customizing that to your company standards with the logos and the stamps. Um, and then there you have it. Um, next up, I have the TBC resources slide, which I want to cover real quick because we're running out of time here. Um, but I really want, I highly recommend you guys check out the, the TBC website. We work really hard to put all these resources up um, in the product information section, as well as the support and downloads information section. Um, you can see that we put in a lot of different stuff here with all the previous Power Hour webinars. I know we had a few questions come in on where to access those. It's right on the Trimble Business Center web website. If you scroll down on the product information and you can see the, the Power Hour webinars there. Um, it's a giant archive and they're all available for free and on demand. Um, we also make things available on our Facebook page. The, the YouTube channel is growing. I think there's about 300 videos um, where we dive into all these in much more detail, um, as well as some bulletins and important updates. Um, and then also, if you want really one place to look at everything in these sections uh, readily available to you, please check out that resources PDF presentation that we update monthly. Um, I do want to make a quick uh, shout out to the first off a couple things the the sa sample data the Trimble ge geo geospatial site um, if you go there there's a lot of sample data that you guys can download for free um, and work with if you're interested in the MX9 data and how that looks in Business Center uh, you can go ahead and download that for free for example uh, we've also added in some e-learning during all the the COVID situations to go on our website and learn TBC virtually it's a really nice way to interact with the product. Um, and kind of get some hints and tutorials and where to click if you click in the wrong place and um, where to go from there. Uh, we also have a May Power Hour announcement coming up, so please keep an eye open for that and I really hope to join you guys pretty soon there again. Um, thank you guys very much for your time. I do have a few questions that were asked more or less around the, the curb and gutter and the four node limitation. Um, yes, there is a four node limit right now, but what we are doing is working on um, expanding that to go could go less than four nodes and, and much more above. Um, so be on the lookout for that coming soon. Um, as well as, let's see, what else do we have? And then how, how would you work that if you just had four nodes? Well, you could just add those to your project and just simply delete the ones that you you didn't need. Um, so just keep two or three or, or one line if you wish. Um, and I think that answered most of the questions. If not, we can go and answer them later. Um, thank you all very much for your time. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us. And, and thank you, Dan, for co-hosting with me. You're welcome. Bye, everybody.